From Fifth Third Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio, the Bearcats are in search of their first sweep of the season after a wild finish yesterday. And Oklahoma tries to salvage the series with a Saturday finale win. Thank you for joining us courtside. So glad you're with us. I'm Anthony Mazzini alongside Stephanie Niemer and Melissa Lucky. What a wild game yesterday. Back and forth, guys. Neither team really gained any separation. Right, that fifth set was neck and neck the entire time. A lot of emotion from both teams. Final score ended up being 16-14. Bearcats victorious. Yeah, Cincinnati had all that momentum in that first game with that win. Half of the second match, and then the momentum switched to Oklahoma side, and it was neck and neck for the rest of the match. All right, Stephanie, let's recap that fifth set that you just mentioned. It was wild. You had an injury to Oklahoma's best player, Alexis Shelton. You had a challenge. You had Shelton coming back in, a replay of the point, and then Cincinnati wins it. There was a lot going on in that fifth set. It was back and forth, like I said, a lot of emotion. I mean, I think a little bit of adrenaline here for Shelton going down, coming back in for the final point after the challenge did not come through for Cincinnati. They had to replay the point. As we see there, Washington getting the final kill for the Bearcats for a 16-14 win. And their first win since Texas Tech on October 25th. For Oklahoma, Melissa, no Shelton today. We showed the injury, lower body injury. She will not play today, and that's a big loss. Yeah, no. Inactive tonight is Alexis Shelton. She's coming off 29 kills, one shy of her career high. She tried to give it a go in warm-ups and just could not, could not do it. So she is officially out for this evening's match. So if you're the Sooners now, you lose your best offensive player. 30 kills nearly yesterday. Abby Walker is going to have a big load on her shoulders again today with the 543 hitting percentage, the second highest in Big 12 play this season. So she's going to be a focal point for Cincinnati. Who is now the focal point for Oklahoma? I'm honestly expecting Preston to have a big night. And what we're, what we're also seeing is McNeese come in for Shelton. Uh, she'll play six rotations. She came in a little bit of last night to play back row for Preston. But I expect Preston to have a, a good night tonight. Here she is tapping it over. First swing for Carly Glendenning. Kimaha puts that up. Chamberlain the set for Preston, and she tools it off the block. So Stephanie, at least through the first couple of swings, it is Preston getting a lot of the looks. Right, and she did get the second most attempts behind Shelton before Shelton went down. So only natural, I think, for them to really get her going early in this match. Preston was in double figures yesterday with 10 kills. Walker, her first swing, and it looks pretty good so far. Denied by McNeese. Walker again. Preston again. Cross court, Scrawback digs it. Glenn Denning, too long. Yeah, like Carly Glenn Denning was struggled a little bit offensively last night. She did have 10 digs in the match, but she's struggling a little bit right now with her confidence. So she needs to come out from the start and stay aggressive. And that's what keeps her going is her aggressiveness. Glenn Denning's swing again is popped up by the block of Oklahoma. Tapped over by Preston and a good one, her second kill. So they are feeding Preston the ball a lot to start. I think we can expect that throughout this match. From a setter perspective, Melissa, is that the natural option, or would you try to spread the ball around? I, I'd try to get their middles more involved, you know, but that's going to start with that first contact, which both teams last night struggled with their ball control and their first contact. But I'd like to see Oklahoma with the loss of Shelton try to get their middles more involved this evening. That's the first point for Cincinnati. The attack from Carly Glendenning. And the middles yesterday for Oklahoma did have some good swings. Carrington had seven kills. Burtz had 13 kills. So the middles did combine for 20 kills yesterday. But with no Shelton today, Preston is getting a lot of the touches. Speaking of touches, she gets one. And another kill, her third. Saying, go back to those middles for Oklahoma. See Burtz enter the game here. And she did, she did have a great match last night. And they, they fed her the ball that last point of the, of the match she had. No blockers up, but Hostetler was in the back row right where she needed to be to dig a burst attack. Walker, 
right off of Chamberlain and a kill for Abby Walker, her first tonight. Yeah, early tonight you can see Cincinnati's trying to get Abby Walker involved. Already has four total attacks in that first kill of this match. Which we were talking yesterday, she at times isn't part of the offense, so it's good to see her get four early swings today. Yeah, and it really is. I think it has a lot to do with Oklahoma's block because that outside hitter, when she is in the front row, she moves way into the middle of the court and they try to set a triple block on Cincinnati's outside hitter. So that really left Abby Walker with a wide open net several attempts last night. So we'll see if Oklahoma's block makes an adjustment with um, this early in this match with Abby Walker having four attempts. Stephanie, you just mentioned Burtz. There was a big kill there for the middle. That was a big kill. So that was a good dig by Scrawback early in that rally, but that last attack was not, was not something the Bearcats would handle. Speaking of big kills out of the middle, Zeta Washington rips one. Her first today, she had a good match yesterday. 15 kills, average 3%. Yeah, good job by Leffler. When she's in the front row, you need to jump set all the time because the blockers sometimes forget if you're front row or back row. And I really think she needs to jump set more often to try to get Oklahoma's block up in the air, and then that will open up a net for her hitters, for attackers. Now 6-3 Oklahoma in the early going. Burtz again with that kill. Lydia Burtz, the transfer from Liberty. Coral Blagojevich on the serve. Knocked over by Washington. Chamberlain tries to clean it up, and it is out. Point for the Bearcats. Molly Alvey, head coach for Cincinnati in her 12th season on that Cincinnati sideline, seeking her 250th career win today. It would be a milestone. She has 187 of them at Cincinnati. A jump serve followed by a jump serve. And it leads to a kill on the outside for Ellison, who had a good match yesterday with the swing she was given. Aaron Mansfield, his first season with Oklahoma. Talked about him yesterday. He is a former men's national team player with the USA, coming over from Loyola Marymount, where he had a lot of success over six years. Williams. That was a great touch there defensively. And then the block. No, it's out of bounds. Cincinnati started to celebrate. They thought they had it in, but it was out on the block. <laughs> Service error. First of the match for either side. Yeah, that was good, because that's one of the a little bit weaker rotation there for Cincinnati when Caitlin Leffler still in the front row with only two attackers. Good dive by Kimaha. Williams, the tap. McNeese, that's something new. We didn't see that much yesterday. And McNeese, she's a little bit undersized to be a front row attacker, but what I like about her is she just goes up and rips it. She is not being tentative. She's taking big swings. 5-9 for an outside hitter. Yeah, 5'9", she's got a great vertical jump. I was impressed with her warm-ups. You know, you don't have a block in front of you, but I was impressed with her warm-up. Well, both of her parents played volleyball at Cal State Northridge, so she has been her blood. She tries to tap that one over. Thompson punches it up. McNeese again the tap. Good fill by Alcantara. Just at the net, and Williams wins it for the Bearcats. Say that ball was sent a little too tight, which is a strategy that Oklahoma has. They try to put the ball tight to the net, but that one a little bit too tight to where Cincinnati got after it first. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Coach Mansfield and his, they like that out of system tight ball, but, you know, right now she's just a little bit undersized. Cincinnati has a bigger block. It'll be interesting to see as the match goes on if they still can set, continue to set that out of system. Wow, ball McNeese tight. again. That's cross court. Tough angle for the kill. So what we're seeing from Oklahoma early is they have some depth to their roster. Yeah, McNeese came split. in mostly as a defensive-minded player. Yeah, huge split in the block. She found it and hammered it. 
She came into this weekend with 60 digs. Did the majority of her work defensively, but a couple of big swings today. Stepping up with no Alexis Shelton. Harrington keeps it in, just in that back right corner. Say another thing with Shelton out tonight and being their big attacker, it kind of it kind of can mess with the team a little bit. You don't underestimate a team without their best player, but it, it is, it's a different look. And the Bearcats have fallen behind here in this first set. Chamberlain the set, Preston the tap. Scrawback sends it up for Walker. McNeese is there. Preston into the net. We've talked about McNeese. She had, did not have a single kill coming into this weekend. Not a single kill. And she had only had six total attempts. So that is the player that is being asked to step up along with Preston in the middles today for Oklahoma. Tough receive there by McNeese. And the ace for the Bearcats goes to Scrawback. Yeah, Bearcats are starting to take advantage. They see McNeese back there. She's not a regular player for them. So right now they're trying to attack her with their serve. Trying to pick on her again, but that one into the net. Well, Stephanie, it's interesting you mentioned how it messes with a team's psyche for Oklahoma losing their best player. Cincinnati's gone through this as well when they lost Jaden Boss earlier this season, and Shea Eggleston has been out since even before that, in the middle of September. So it's something that Cincinnati, they have had the benefit of playing the majority of the season without their two best offensive options, at least from the outsides. But Oklahoma now has to deal with that on one day notice without having Shelton in there. Right, and I was actually just thinking about that during last night's match is how Cincinnati has been plagued with some injuries. And I didn't know if Oklahoma had had one yet, but well, there were a couple there in the fifth set and they are affected. Well, right now Sooners lead it by. Well, Taylor Preston is not only the player that is being asked to step up today in the loss of Alexis Shelton, she's also a local product from Union, Kentucky, about 20 minutes south of Cincinnati, if even. And rumor has it she had about 60 to 70 family and friends in attendance over the course of the weekend for these two matches. I think a good, a good portion of those people might be here today. I know uh, high school coaches of hers were planning on coming to today's match. That is off the block and down. Bearcats point, Abby Walker the kill. Yeah, Abby Walker, you can see her confidence just building because she's a natural middle. Her first two and a half years here at Cincinnati, she was a middle blocker. They've asked her to move to the, the opposite position because of injuries, and you can just see her confidence building. She's able to mix up her shots a little bit, take some speed off of it. Popped up and down. Washington powers it through the block. Yeah, I really like Zeta Washington. That The ball that they set to her in the middle is a little bit higher. It's not a quick tempo ball. And it takes a block a little bit into the match to adjust to the height of the set. But she does such a tremendous job. She has different shots she can hit. She doesn't play like a true freshman. And that's Preston for Oklahoma getting the Sooners back on track. And that's what Aaron Mansfield said makes Cincinnati so tough. They're quick to the outsides, but slow to the middle. Meanwhile, a team like Baylor with their setter they're quick to everything. Middles, outside, regardless, it didn't matter. They were going to be quick. Cincinnati varies their timing. Ooh, scrappy play there for Cincinnati. Good dig by Whittakin. Tapped over by Glenn Denning. Another good dig by Whittakin. Glenn Denning again. Punched up by Chamberlain, but around the antenna. Cincinnati point. It's nice to see Glenn Denning starting to stay aggressive and hit though. Last night she got a little bit tentative, probably was hitting a little bit too much off speed, tipping a little bit too much. She's staying in the play because the last couple rallies have been out of system. She needs to stay aggressive because she is going to have a triple block up on her. Well, at the service line is where she really thrived yesterday, had three aces. That one's not a direct ace, but it does lead to a point for the Bearcats.
14-12, Oklahoma has led from wire to wire so far in this first set, but the Bearcats jumping back in. Speaking of jumping, Ellison. Now Alcantara, haven't called her name much yet tonight. Punched around, and that is four contacts. Kill for Alcantara. Okay, Alcantara, I think she, she might be the most improved this season. She wasn't getting a lot of time in the beginning because we, we had Voss and we had Eggleston in, playing in matches, but now she has been a consistent starter. She's found her footing, and she's doing a much better job on the outside. Well, we've talked about how Cincinnati has lost their two main outside hitters this season with Shea Eggleston and Jaden Boss. At the beginning of the year, they were an offensive-focused team with those two on the outsides. They've really had to embrace the defense as the season has gone along. Yeah, they really have, and the leader of that defense is, is Graubach. When she first arrived here on campus, she's a new player. You know, I don't know if she really knew what her role was going to be on this team, but as the season has progressed, she just has taken control of that defense. She's covering more ground. She's taking more balls on serve receive. She really has kept Cincinnati in some of these matches, and now their offense is starting to catch up. Well, it's a double-edged sword too, Stephanie, because those outside hitters were also two of the best defensive players on the team. So yes, they had to embrace that role, but imagine how good they could be if Boston and Eggleston were still available to play. Right, that's just something we just, we just won't know. Uh, but I think the Bearcats have proved to be resilient throughout the season. Yeah. They did have to go on the road after those injuries, and they did come up victorious. So it's, it's going back to that, making that mental that mental glitch it could have on you, say the opponent that they did face right after those injuries, they think their big players are down. You might take take them a little bit easier, but they caught Kansas State, for example, by surprise and got a win on the road. And they beat Kansas State and they beat TCU in a three-match road swing right after Boss went down and Eggleston's been out since more of the beginning to middle of September. Cincinnati also a win against West Virginia, win against Texas Tech, and of course last night in the opener against Oklahoma. Good dig by McNeese, who's been very impressive. Ellison rises. Back set, Washington. Back set for Preston now. Strawback runs it down. Alcantara, the tap, and to be denied by Burtz. Yeah, she tried to hide the tip last minute, but it was just a little too low. Had Burtz just hanging in there, ready to shove it right back down. She had the right idea, because I think that the weakness in Oklahoma's defense right now is that zone four, which is directly cross court. I think she had the right idea, but she's got four big hands in front of her. She's got to get it over the block. We didn't see much of Mele Coral Borgoyevich yesterday, but she's playing a bit more today. That was a wicked serve. It did go out, but that had some steam behind it. That was a, that was a very good serve. It kind of had a little bit of sidewinder to it, so it was going cross court to that right back position, but yeah, just a little bit too much on it. Does that send you to flashbacks of Hancock from Penn State a number of years ago? It does. She had a she had a wicked serve, except hers was from the opposite end of the court. It was from the left back, left back to left back, and that thing was wicked. And Hancock was left-handed, yes. correct? So that you don't see, you know, you're used to seeing right-handed jump serve back there. You don't see a whole lot of left-handed jump serves, but I remember watching her on TV and wow, what a what a serve. I remember we got down that rabbit hole about talking about float serves versus the jump serves, and that was the only jump serve that you'd rather not hit than a float. Totally, yeah. Ever, so coaches honestly prefer the float. I know that USA Volleyball really, really stresses uh, float serving because it's just more difficult to pass in most cases. Alcantara, that's difficult Ooh. to dig. Love the confidence that Alcantara has. She's never been a timid player, but she is taking big swings. Yeah, the coaching staff, I think, has done a really good job once the two starting outsides were out. They've really done a good job with Alcantara of, of building her confidence, and it starts in practice, and she really, really has turned it in. That confidence into a match. Kelsey Carrington with a kill there for the Sooners. Well, the confidence, too, stems from playing. Because early in the year, Glenn Denning and Alcantara were the rotational pieces. They'd come on to take a few swings, maybe a serve, whatever it is. 
and it was Boston Eggleston that were playing the six rotations. Now that Glenn Denning and Alcantara are playing, they're staying in the groove and they're building confidence by just having the reps. And another thing that builds confidence is if, you, if you're making a lot of errors, but you are staying on the court, that, that helps Next because play. you can get in your head a little bit if you're making a lot of mistakes and you feel like you're going to come out of the game. It's nice to have a little bit, a longer leash, so to say. It's like once you come out, you don't know when or if you're going to be asked to go back in. Right, so it is nice to have a little bit of a cushion. You can play a little bit more freely. Cincinnati gets a point back. Sydney Thompson, the serve into the net. Following a similar script to yesterday where neither set or any set is really getting out of hand, Oklahoma jumped out to the early advantage, but it's been decided by one or two points back and forth as the first set has gone along. Long set, Chamberlain to McNeese, tapped over. McNeese tries the joust. Cross court for Glenn Denning is out. Boy, McNeese can really get up there. She was even involved in that triple block on the far side. And I, th I think that's why she is on a power five. She's part of a power five volleyball program. She's got a great vertical leap. She's got good ball control. She makes a lot of good defensive plays in the back row for the Sooners. And she's serving now, picking on her fellow freshman, Kayla Hostetler. Running start for Glenn Denning, and she sends it too long. No touch. Timeout, Bearcats. Oklahoma up 20 to 16 in set one. A rebuild year for Aaron Mansfield. Of course, he is in his first year as the head coach coming over from Loyola Marymount, but they had to retool the roster a little bit. They lose two really good ones with Megan Wilson and Morgan Perkins transferring out. But Daly Ellison has been good this weekend. Lydia Burtz has been fantastic. Riley Fay, we've seen her in a couple of serving situations, but not as a regular in the rotation. But a couple of really good ones coming in as part of that transfer class. Yeah, and they thought, you know, it's tough when you lose the caliber of players that they lost last year to the transfer portal. And new coaching staff coming in, new system they, they wanted to put in place. And then they had eight in the spring. And so to get, you know, these impact transfers, especially Burt's in the middle, she's she's been phenomenal. And she's having a great match tonight. Three kills, no errors, hitting 750 so far in this first set. Yeah, and those are the players they lost that you mentioned. Megan Wilson, who goes to Kentucky. Morgan Perkins, who goes to Texas A&M. Worst part about that, too, is they're sophomores, a sophomore and a freshman. So you're losing players that you think you have two or three maybe years of development left, and they transfer out. Of course, that's the way college athletics is trending nowadays, but two big losses and two big ga gains for Kentucky and the Aggies. Cincinnati, no more timeouts. Oklahoma with one. Sooners need five points to wrap up. Set one. That one pops high off the net on the Walker attack. And that's a ball that Cincinnati has to take care of. That's a free ball. That ball needs to be perfect right to Leffler on the net. Yeah, that free ball. It was, you know, in a tough position, but I mean, that is, you're exactly right. That is an easy free ball. In the college game, you don't get many free balls like that, and that pass has got to be perfect. It was a little bit too far off the net, but Glenn Denning did a great job handling it and powering it through the block. Preston denied. Preston again. Yes. Right past Strawback. Couldn't get there in time. Yeah, I've been impressed with Preston. She always has big block in front of her. Had a nice, solid double block, but was able to hit it that hard angle to the left of Zeta Washington's hand and her fifth kill this match. Must be that St. Henry coaching, right, Stephanie? That's right. Give credit where it's due. <laughs> Abby Walker, the kill there for the Bearcats. That's where her game has evolved, is that set was a little bit off the net, higher than she's used to because she's a middle blocker. But that's where it has evolved, and she's learning how to tool the block and come up with different shots to find ways to score. Well, unfortunate for McNeese, but the advantage for Walker there hit right off the top of the net. McNeese was in good position to dig it, but the deflection caught her in the face instead. 
Kimaha runs it down, tight set for Preston. Another one for Preston. Free ball. Washington, denied. Good cover by Hostetler. McNeese can't get there, and a kill for Carly Glendening. Well, Glendening, another out of system play for her. She did her job. Just a little roll shot to the middle of the court, and Oklahoma wasn't able to handle it. Fourth kill of this match. And it's a one point first set. Burtz tries to get a little separation for the Sooners. She'll try again, falling away, and Hostetler again with a good dive. Say Walker staying involved defensively, keeping the Bearcats alive in this. Preston but through the block. Big swing by Preston to end that rally. So the middles, Melissa, are staying involved, but it seems the script for Oklahoma, it was the same last night, granted it was Shelton. When you need a big kill to end a rally, you go to the outside, but they are going to try to sprinkle in some middles over the regular run of play. Yeah, they are. They're, you know, Preston, Taylor Preston right now is their focal point. I still, you know, when I was coaching and when I was taught as a setter to run everything, try to run everything through your middle, get it, get them involved and engaged, and then that will keep the middle blocker with you, and then that will open up things on the pin. Well, there's one for Burtz again. It's kind of a no-look hook shot there. Yeah, and when it can saw the tip, she just didn't know how fast she was going to throw it, so that one went right over her shoulder. Chamberlain tracks it down. Tough set for Preston. Leffler the high set for Glenn Denning, and it is blocked. Preston and Burtz get the way. Yeah, good job by Oklahoma in their block. Triple block again. Glenn Denning's got, got to know she's going to have six big hands in front of her. She's got to find a way to get it around that block and find a spot on the floor to score. Set point Sooners. Ended by Ellison. Oklahoma wins set one. Well, so far, a reversal of what happened last night when the Bearcats won the first set. The Sooners then proceeded to win the next two before the Bearcats won in five. Tonight, it is Oklahoma taking control first, 25 to 20. Bearcats in search of their first sweep of the year. Sooners trying to end a four-match losing skid. And one set in, Oklahoma has the advantage. To 20 after one set. Anthony Mazzini, Stephanie Niemer, and Melissa Lucky with you. After one, the Sooners dominating in a lot of categories. You guys were talking coming into this second set, the outsides for Cincinnati hitting zero right now. So they got to clean that up on the offensive end. Say, and through set one, going back to statistics, the Sooners are hitting 327 compared to Cincinnati's 149. And the inning percentage, a big reason why the Bearcats dropped that first set, and the blocks as well. Two and a half for Oklahoma in that first set. Now the top 25 entering this weekend. Texas, the headliner in the Big 12. One of five Big 12 teams in the top 25, along with the Pac-12, the soon-to-be defunct Pac-12. SEC, Big 10, and ACC all with four. So the Big 10, they used to they used to be a conference. They'd have like eight teams in the top 25. Well, they do boast the number one team, so that makes up for it a little bit, right? They do. They've, they've historically just had great volleyball, but the Big 12 is really emerging in a numbers game of having a lot of teams in the top 25. I mean, with the Pac-12, that's going to boost up the Big 12 numbers. It's going to boost up the ACC numbers with Cal and Stanford going over to the ACC. Conference realignment is a wild, wild thing. The Cincinnati's hoping to start off this second set a little bit better than the first. Started down... 3-0 in the first set, so scrawl back to start off the Bearcats, hopefully with a strong, aggressive serve. 
Burks picks up where she left off after set one. Wow. Yeah, it all starts with the pass. That was a perfect pass up to the center Chamberlain. Nice quick tempo ball right. I don't know where Zeta Washington was. I think she was cheating toward the outside, but you have to, but with Burt's front row, you cannot let her have a free net. It was Mele Coral Blagojevic on that first contact for the Sooners. Bearcats hoping for a touch, it's not there. I think that's a challenge right there. I think that ball had a little bit of spin come off of it, um, off of a blocker's hand, and Cincinnati players seem pretty convinced. So we are going to get a challenge here from Cincinnati. Yeah, but in true fashion, even going off of last night, Walker had a great night, Burtz had a great night, and they're both starting off tonight same way. No fatigue, no rest for the weary. No, it's, it's a quick turnaround. You don't even get a ton of time to watch video. It's you, at, at, at this point, it's like you eat, you sleep, you play volleyball. I think they make shirts for that, don't they? Eat, sleep, volleyball? Oh, I think it clipped a finger there. Yeah, middle blocker, Carrington. And you see that finger yeah. kind of jiggle a little bit. Good call. Yeah, you can see it really on that last view that it went off that right hand, Kelsey Carrington. A challenge successful. The Bearcats get to keep that challenge. Molly Alvey ran through all of her challenges yesterday. Resulted in a win. Blocked but out point for the Sooners. Yeah, McNeese is doing a really good job. She is really undersized. They list her at 5'9". You know, I'm not sure if she's even that tall, but she's got a great vertical. It seems like she's got a real high volleyball IQ. She knows she's not going to be able to pound a ball to the floor. She finds ways to score, and that time she tooled off the block for her fourth kill this match. We talked about it yesterday. You see the heights listed on rosters. You take that with a grain of salt sometimes. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes people sit there higher, like, oh, is that your roster height? <laughs> or... Here's McNeese again. Going back to McNeese, with an undersized player like that, they can be very dangerous because they're swinging like they have nothing to lose. Like you said, Melissa, she's not going to go up there and just slam a ball in the middle of the court. But she's aiming for hands. So if you're a blocker, you have to stay super disciplined because her goal is to get up there and use hands. Another try. And that one is in. A bad read from Glenn Denning in the back row. She thought it was out. Yeah, just finding ways to score. McNeese, her fifth kill, hit deep, had some top spin, and just stayed in. The other aspect here, too, and Stephanie, you just mentioned it, you don't really even watch film. It's a very quick turnaround. For a player that came in with six total attempts and no kills, this wasn't even close to Cincinnati's radar, you have to imagine. Right, and I think that's just coming from Oklahoma just haven't, hasn't suffered any big injuries yet, so their starters have been playing all season. However, she is getting those reps in practice. So when they're playing practice games and the starting side versus the rest of the team, she's the one who's out on that opposite pin hitting against the starting Oklahoma Sooners. Well, there's Preston back to one of the usual outsides. And another kill for the local kid, Taylor Preston. Yeah, Caitlin Leffler, I think they were really trying to tool her block last night. It seems like they're doing that again. She's not quite getting her hands over the net and sealing it, and it's coming down in front of her need to do a better job of sealing off that net. Is that a mechanical adjustment? Is that a timing adjustment? What does that boil down to? I mean, I think it could be timing, but right now I think it's mechanical because earlier in the season, Caitlin Leffler, I thought, was blocking pretty well. She wasn't being tooled as much. She pushed that right hand, which is on the outside, back into the court, so balls were staying in the court. And right now, She's just a little bit too far off of the net, and that ball is just rolling down right in front of her. Now you don't need a block when you tip it over like that. Whittakin, with a great effort, just couldn't get there. Preston mixing up her shot. 
Eighth kill for the sophomore. Long set, Alcantara into the net. I feel like Alcantara was trying to go sharp cross court on that ball, but that ball just wasn't high enough on the net to hit such a sharp shot. Uh, Molly Alvey sensing the wind out of her team's sails, calls the timeout. And Oklahoma already up one set to none in front, seven to three in set two. Sooners looking good. And the national championship on ABC. Great to see the growth of volleyball. Of course, that Nebraska game against Omaha played at Memorial Stadium with more than 90,000 fans. And now you're getting ABC and ESPN linear games for these volleyball semifinals and national championships. It is, it's huge for volleyball. And well, the national championship, I believe, used to be on ESPNU. Um, but now to be on ABC, a major network, and just talking about the growth of volleyball in general, we're now going to have a professional volleyball league yeah. in the United States. And even if you're not a volleyball fan, I mean, to see that Nebraska match and to see how many thousands of people were packed in this football stadium to watch volleyball, I mean, that was just unbelievable. Do you guys have any early picks for a potential national champion. Anything come to mind? I mean, Omaha, excuse me, Nebraska's looked very dominant. Nebraska has been very dominant. However, I always like to see somebody new. Mm. I like to see a new team win the national championship. Like when Kentucky won a few years back, that, I mean, that was pretty major. It was someone different than what yeah. we're used to seeing. Um, so I always like to root for an underdog. And I know personally, I always, I, I've been rooting for Louisville the last several years because she, it's a female head coach. Mm. You know, so many of these prominent programs are coached by males. And there are a few female head coaches, University of Florida, Georgia Tech, Louisville. And so I, I, I find myself rooting for these programs that are coached by females. So a little soft spot for uh, UCF now with their new head coach, even though Todd Dejeuner was great. Yes, yes, and I, um, yeah, just a little soft spot because you do, you see um, so many prominent programs these days being coached by males. Nothing against males, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, you know, I do have a soft spot for, you know, a female head coach. I would love to see them break through and win the national championship. Good swing there for Abby Walker for the kill, and that is, by the way, Jenny Maurer, who is down at UCF now, replaced Todd Dejeuner, who, by the way, you mentioned the new league in the U.S., the Pro League, Todd Dejeuner left UCF to be the inaugural head coach of the Atlanta professional team in that new volleyball league. It's amazing how it all ties together. So the volleyball community is pretty pretty small. There comes the block with one there. Legia Williams and Carly Glendetting combined for it. Now, Texas is the reigning national champions on the back of Logan Eggleston last year. They will try for their title defense. Melissa, you mentioned Louisville. They are the top-ranked team in the ACC at number four entering the week. But still a couple of matches away before postseason play continues or before it starts. When Denning will rip there right through the seam. So that might have been her best swing so, so far tonight. Uh, she seemed to be taking a little bit off of most of her swings. Um, hopefully that one can get her more in a groove uh, for the Bearcats. Fifth kill. Ellison. Good dig by Hostetler. Burtz. So one thing I'm seeing, even from last night and tonight, the effort on both sides has been very impressive. I mean, players are getting getting balls up with their shoulders. They're throwing one arm under it, getting ball like just throwing themselves on the ground. I mean, we've seen players get hit in the head. For better or worse. For better or for worse. Yeah, and you never know on these back-to-back -back nights. It was such an emotional game yesterday. And you never know, you know, coming back on this second night, how these, the girls are going to react physically and also mentally. That's 
McNeese again, tooling it off the block. McNeese has six kills, eight for Preston, seven for Burtz, and six for Ireland McNeese. Williams didn't get all of it, and a good dig by McNeese. Interesting dig there by McNeese. Kind of looked like she had both hands open and just plopped it right up. Whatever it takes. Setting, setting it up for her this time, and Leffler the dig. Walker, good Great dig. swing, but an amazing dig. Kimaha the dig. Violation, Oklahoma. And the little barrels for both of this team, Kimoha and Scrawback, they have made some amazing digs tonight and last night. Melissa, I saw you pointing that one out right away. I did. Setter is back row. And she's a little bit taller. And I, I could not tell if the ball was on the plane of the net. But when, she, when a setter or a, any player is back row, they cannot try to go over the net to attack a ball. But I think it was on the plane in Legia Williams. That ball came in contact with Legia Williams. So it went against Peyton Chamberlain, the setter, who surpassed 2,000 career assists earlier this season in a match against Iowa State. Oklahoma's blocked, but Ellison tools it off the block. Yeah, Ellison and, and McNeese, they do a really good job. They're, they're both undersized. But they do a really good job. Again, they're not going to pound a ball on the floor, but they, they're finding ways to score, whether they're tooling the block or finding open spots on that opposite side. And they've combined for 10 kills early in this second set. Ellison played at Texas State for three years. She had 32 total kills in 38 matches over three years. This year approaching 100. That's an ace, and it goes to Faye, who has come on as a serving specialist at times over the weekend. That was a great serve by Faye. That ball just dropped right in front of host Stetler. Going back to that two-man serve receive, the Bearcats are. Walker had a good swing earlier, has a good swing again. Yeah, Abby Walker again. Last night she have a, had a phenomenal match. It zero errors, and she's picked up right where she's left off. Seven kills, again zero errors, hitting 350 in this match. So that is a combined 24 kills and no errors for Walker over the match yesterday and now at the start of the match today. But even going off of last night alone, just se 17 kills and no errors. That is, that's impressive. That, she's getting a lot of swings and not making a single error. Yeah, she had 31 attempts last night and 17 kills. Melissa, do you remember a match a couple of years ago against Tulsa that Arroway, who had that big match, and she didn't have any errors, and I think she had 20-something kills in that match, no errors. Yeah, and she was a player. She was their best player, and everybody knew she was going to get yeah. the ball, and she had a phenomenal match. It's, you know, it's just incredible at this level that the way the blocking is and the physicality at the net that you have no errors. If I remember correctly, I think she was top five in the country in attempts per match. And she had a great match here against Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Oklahoma played Tulsa earlier this year. Part of a little bit of a breakup in Big 12 play. So Oklahoma's done a good job so far tonight, slowing some of Washington's attacks down. They're getting more touches on her swings, slowing that ball down for the defense. We mentioned that match against Tulsa for Oklahoma. They surpassed a number of program records in that match. 72 assists against Tulsa, the most in a five-set match, and had a good showing against Boise State earlier in the season as well. Double contact against the Sooners. I think that is the first ball handling call that they've made in this series. I thought a couple last night possibly could have been called against the setter, both setters. McNeese again, the spinner off the block. McNeese is having a night so far. That's her eighth kill on 17 attempts, hitting over 350. 
She was the, I think she's the sleeper for today. Obviously someone the Bearcats might not have scouted, but she is stepping into this role. Just a freshman. Alcantara off the hands. Yeah, we have to see what how the outside hitters for Cincinnati are going to react. They struggled a little bit in that first set. They've got a big triple block in front of them. They have to find a way either to tool the block, find a way to score, and put that ball down on the opponent's floor. Which, by the way, that triple block for Oklahoma was implemented much earlier today than it was yesterday. We didn't see that much in the first set. But as the match went along, wow. Carrington, just an absolute bomb. Yeah, nice job by Chamberlain. Setter is front row for Oklahoma right now. So Legia Williams, she jumped set. Legia Williams stayed with the setter, left a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Kelsey Carrington, and she hammered that down the line. Third kill this match. Alcantara, another one off the block. Yeah, again, he's able to tool the block. The setter, Peyton Chamberlain. Alcantara's fifth kill this match. And again, separated by just one point in this second set. Neither team gaining much separation. Burtz gives them a little bit of breathing room. That's a really quick set. And I don't know, Cincinnati's block is maybe not quite used to that quick of a set in the middle, but Birds was able to find its way through the block. Seventh kill this match. Overpass by Paige Pickering, who is in for Cincinnati. Birds again. Wow. Big swing by Birds. Cincinnati has not found the solution in slowing her down after last night, just letting her have her way at the net. It's nine kills for Burtz to take the team lead. Yeah, Legia Williams was trying to take that other angle away, and she came across her body. Peyton Leffert made a great effort to try to get that last ball up of Burtz. Alcantara with another kill there, so she started to find her footing now. That's six for Alcantara. That was an impressive uh, making lemonade out of a lemon there. That ball was set a little too tight, and she found a way to punch it over and also get hands on that for the point. I wasn't sure what you were going to make there. You said make it and then a little pause, and I'm like, what's she going to make like, here? What do I want to make? Well, you were I talking about pancakes and Maybe. how you make good pancakes, so I didn't know if we were going to have another breakfast food reference. Yeah, I would say lemonade sounds pretty good, so make lemonade. Lemonade's always great. Timeout Oklahoma with Cincinnati now on a bit of a run here. Now tonight is senior night for Cincinnati. The Bearcats will honor three seniors. Some of them the super seniors, the graduate seniors. With Jaden Boss, the player we talked about earlier who was off to a really good start before missing the rest of the season with an injury. She suffered against UCF in the first weekend of conference play. Alyssa Alcantara who has stepped up in Boss's absence. And Carly Scrawback, the transfer from Marquette. Spent her graduate student year at Cincinnati and really stabilized that defense. So all three of these players have been impact players throughout throughout the year. Say so Boss, her her impact this season was a little cut short, but with the injury. But all three of those players have been great for the program. Yeah, I think Jaden Boss. She spent her first four years at SMU and we had the luxury of seeing her play when she was at SMU and I think she took on a little bit of a different role when she transferred here to Cincinnati she was more of the focal point offensively she she played a lot when she was at SMU but I don't yep. think she was the number one option I don't think she was the focal point and that totally changed for her here at Cincinnati she was the focal point six rotation player uh, you know she was tremendous and that just you know, really hurt the Bearcats losing Jaden Boss along with Shay Eagleston. We talked to Alyssa Alcantara after last night's match. She said it really hasn't hit her yet that her volleyball career is coming to a close. They'll be honored tonight, but Cincinnati has another home match against Kansas before finishing at Iowa State to end the season after Thanksgiving. 
When did it hit you guys? When did you really realize that, okay, this is coming to an end? I know, uh, Stephanie, for you, it lasted a little longer. <laughs> I was gonna say, mine went till I was in my 30s. <laughs> so I, I will say that playing in college, it goes by so fast, and it's such a cliche. You hear it all the time, like, oh, enjoy this time, it goes by so fast. But it really does. And I mean, I would give anything to go back and wake up at 6 a.m. and have my strength coach yell at me and tell me I need to leg press more weight. I would like, I loved my years in college, and it, it was a sad time to to put behind me. But it does go by quickly. Yeah, it just it, it's changed so much because I played, you know, obviously before you did, and there really wasn't the training table and the the strength coaches. You know, we did a lot of that, maybe not on our own, but our head coach led the strength and conditioning. We didn't, you know, we had to go to the cafeteria to eat. We, you know, we just didn't have the luxuries that some of these current student athletes have. Walker off the block. McNeese. And Denning tries to push. Chamberlain a little bit behind Ellison. When Denning tries again, and it is blocked, but out. So that one might that one might have hurt Oklahoma a little bit. That that whole rally started with an overpass, which when you get an overpass, that's just like candy. You just want to get up there and hit that ball straight down. But Cincinnati was able to dig that ball and go back and forth for a little bit. Well, Stephanie, I was thinking about something you just said. You'd rather wake up at 6 a.m. and get yelled at by your strength coach. You played in a lot of very nice places. I have to imagine waking up on a nice morning in Puerto Rico or Greece is probably a little more glamorous than waking up on a 6 a.m. morning in Cincinnati to get yelled at by your strength and conditioning coach. Let's say that, those were the days. I did, I did really like waking up, going to a Caribbean beach, um, and then going to practice at 2 p.m. But there's something different about um, the camaraderie in college. It's much different than playing professionally. Um, it's more, I have to say, it's not a team sport overseas when it comes to a professional level, level but it, it is more of a business. And if you don't play well, you could get fired. It's yep. just like any job. If you don't perform well, you'll get fired. So the college years are not ones to take for granted. You just never forget these moments and these matches with your teammates. You have to be a little bit more selfish when you play pro. Not selfish when it comes to the team and, and whether you win or lose and things like that, but your individual performance and kind of how you go about your day to day. It's, it's so different. And you see it in every sport when it comes to the NBA or the NFL. Um, it's, just, it's very different. You can find camaraderie and you form friendships with teammates, but like you said, yes, you, you're thinking of things differently. Well, you factor in too, you know, you get older, you start having family and kids and husbands and wives and things of that nature. On off day, you're probably spending with them or yourselves, whereas in college, you're around your teammates 24-7, 365. Say, and also another thing, even if you're not with someone, or you don't have your significant other with you, you're alone a lot. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of people think is so glamorous about playing professional sports is all you have it made. But there are pros and cons to everything. Um, playing professionally is amazing, but there are things that uh, these athletes would miss with their family and their friends, like weddings and funerals and birthdays, a lot of major life events. Meanwhile, Melissa's over there saying, man, we were riding on buses. <laughs> all of this sounds great. We weren't riding on buses. We were in 15 passenger vans. <laughs> That's kind of how long ago I played. I didn't have the luxury of uh, riding on those charter buses. And when I went right into coaching, I had to drive one of those 15 passenger vans. How many times did the bus break down or the van break down? Oh, luckily it didn't. I think um, my very first trip as a as an assistant coach was just a disaster. So I think I coached, you know, at Austin P in Middle Tennessee area and we were headed to Jonesboro, Arkansas and I was following. We had two 15 passenger vans and I was following my head coach and didn't tell her that a taillight was out. We got pulled over. Mm. So I got yelled at for that. Not really yelled at, but 
And then I was in charge of laundry because we didn't have managers. It was just she and I, and you know, the assistant coach takes care of all that other stuff and brand new white uniforms, put them in a dryer. The dryer was too hot, got them out. And there's black streaks all over the uniform. And I thought one weekend into my coaching career, I was gonna be fired. It's just the alternate uniforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Approaching the end of the second set, decided by just one point, 22-21. Oklahoma leading one set to none. Carly Glendening at the service line. Coral Bergoyevic on the receive. Carrington sends it over. Alcantara. Yes! Ooh, ha! That was a big one from Alcantara. Yeah, nice swing. I think she's really trying to take advantage. Peyton Chamberlain, Oklahoma setters front row right now, really trying to take advantage of that and hit down that line. So we were talking about vertical leaps for McNeese, but Alcantara in, in her own right has quite the leap as well. Now Cincinnati just started to celebrate prematurely. They haven't won the point yet. Great dig and cover by Oklahoma. And it leads to a point for the Sooners. Cincinnati started to celebrate. After all of that, they don't even get the point. Oh, that looked like it could have been out there for McNeese. It, it was out, but she did get a Bearcat finger. Ooh. Yeah, Zeta Washington, I think. It Got her finger. I missed the touch call there. My apologies. Washington now right back to work after the unfortunate hand placement. It's a big serve for this set. 23 all. And it goes Oklahoma's way. Is that one there you want to serve aggressively, but at the same time you have to know the situation getting to the end of the second set? I don't hate I don't hate the decision. She has been doing a top spin serve, which is a riskier serve and yields to a little bit more of an error. Blocked by Oklahoma. Williams couldn't get it over, and the Sooners on the verge of a sweep. 25-23 in the second set. Oklahoma has not won over their last four matches, but they have a chance tonight to put an end to the losing skid. Led by Ireland McNeese with 10 kills, the Sooners have a two sets to none advantage over Cincinnati. Intermission in Fifth Third Arena, and we will have the third set coming up in just a few moments here on the Big 12 now on ESPN. Emer and Melissa Lucky with you. Uh, this has been a, a fun match. It's gone Oklahoma's way so far at the beginning of this match, which I don't want to say has come as a surprise, but we talked at the beginning of the match how Alexis Shelton is out with a ankle lower body injury after last night's match. They've looked really good in her absence. They do, they seem a lot more comfortable. They just look comfortable playing in here, which this is not their home court, but we're seeing a different Oklahoma team. And like you said, it's because Shelton's not on the court, but they also just seem more confident and comfortable. Yeah, they seem exactly more confident. They're having fun. Um, they, Shelton was their focal point. They seem to be a little bit more well-balanced. They're getting their middles involved. And then both their pins are a little bit undersized, but they're finding ways to put the ball down on the floor and score. Yeah, the stats through two sets. The hitting percentage stands out. The blocks for Oklahoma, they were out blocked yesterday. Cincinnati was great with the blocks, not today. And the kills, I mean, they're racking them up just as they did yesterday. But the hitting percentage is the real big differentiator. All right, Cincinnati has improved from the first set. They were hitting under 200 in set one, um, got up to 224. However, Oklahoma hitting over 300, which is a great hitting percentage for the team. We talked about how Taylor Preston was gonna have to step up, Melissa, and she certainly has, not leading the team in kills, but the, she has been the go-to option offensively for the Sooners. Yeah, to start off that first set, she was the go-to. They, they now have really spread the offense around. 
Uh, she's got eight. She has eight kills, 29 attempts, hitting 138 on the evening. Abby Walker, Stephanie, also has eight kills, and she's been involved early and often today. Right, I think the Bearcats are trying to get Walker the ball whenever they can. She hasn't had an error so far, so she is the hot hitter for Cincinnati. Hitting percentage down for Preston, but the production is still there, and they have combined for three blocks today. Preston showing out in front of her friends and family. Walker, the two-time all-conference, having another very good season for Cincinnati. Now still in intermission here at Fifth Third Arena. And Oklahoma trying for the sweep of two sets to none over the Bearcats, trying to snap a four-match losing skid tonight. Right now, Donato's is serving up something delicious. Make that delicious, because for a limited time, you can get quite a deal on a small 10-inch one-topping pizza. Just five bucks when you buy any large pizza. One small price and one big deal. Order any large pizza and get your one-topping 10-inch pizza for just $5 today. Order now. Donato's. Every piece is important. Every bite better with Pepsi. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Welcome to the one and only Oklahoma, where world-class scholars and scientists are connecting to protect the one world, one planet that connects us all. Road scholars, Check. Largest research engine in the state? Check. The next generation realizing a new American dream? Okay. Actually, it's better than okay. It's O-K-L-A-H-O-M-A. -A. It's the one university where one OU family makes up the one and only Oklahoma. The University of Oklahoma is up two sets to none over Cincinnati in front of a packed house in Fifth Third Arena. We're underway in set three out of the intermission, and it starts with a rip from Carly Glendenning. That was a gnarly serve coming to host Zettler, but she was able to keep that ball in play and a big swing by Glendenning. Gnarly, what are you, from California now? If I want to be. That was gnarly, dude. Gnarly. Point for the Sooners on the service error. You're from all over the place. I've talked I'm about a, your I'm overseas exploits, yeah. I'm a nomad, but you know, I call Kentucky home. And you are moving now. I so am. you are technically a nomad. I am, yes. <laughs> Left of the back set, Walker. Good swing for Ellison, and nobody can get to the second ball for Cincinnati. Yeah, Ellison having a nice evening. That's her Six kill this match, no errors, hitting 429. And Oklahoma is doing exactly what they needed to do today with the cards that they were dealt. With Shelton not in, all other players are stepping up. Washington keeps it in right along that far sideline. And I think Oklahoma is serving much more. They always serve aggressively, but I think they're making it really tough tonight for Cincinnati. Their, their first contact off serve receive is struggling a little bit. I think Oklahoma is doing a great job of mixing all their offense up, and they're having fun. Well, in some respects for Oklahoma, it's been a trying season, 2-13 and 13 in the Big 12 and you come into today's match without your best offensive player. In some respects, you're playing with house money at that point. You know, you're gonna try some different things, some different players. If you win, obviously that's great. If they didn't come away with the win today, there's somewhat of a reason for it. You know, quick turnaround, lost Shelton. It's been a tough season with some transition, and they're playing like they have nothing to lose today. Definitely, they, are, they do seem to have that mentality and like Melissa said, they look like they're having more fun today. And it could be that nothing to lose mentality. 
Big swing for McNeese and a big kill. Wow, she's been absolutely fantastic today. And the one thing is, I once she has a big swing like that, I mean, that thing hits straight off a straw back and into the stands. But I look over to her coaching staff, and they are smiling from ear to ear. They just love to see it for her. I mean, that's a heck of a swing for someone her size, but she's got tremendous leaping ability to be able to hit that angle. She can't get that one up. Zeta Washington pounds it to the floor. Yeah, they need to get their middles more involved. Into the game, Lillian Entman in at middle blocker. She is replacing Legia Williams. Chamberlain back set on the slot. Harrington right off of Strawback. Ooh, Cincinnati has to do a better job, I think, of sealing that line. They're just giving too much daylight, and there's not much Strawback can do with that. Got her right off the shoulder. Yesterday, she had one of those that resulted in a kill. So those are, you don't see those often. Preston, a little bit behind her, she taps it. Alcantara. Thompson. Chamberlain dumps it down herself. Yeah, Chamberlain, that joust with Alcantara. Usually a setter, if for some reason, always does such a great job with those jousts up at the net. More than not, they win those battles. That's an ace. Whittakin ducked out of the way. And Kali Kimaha plops it down in the back row. That was a great serve by Kimaha. That landed right in the last like foot of the court. Difficult ball to pass. Kimaha, a second generation Sooner. Her dad, Bert, uh, Brett, excuse me, played baseball with the Sooners. Big block. Burtz. Yeah, big block. That was just kind of telegraph. Caitlin Leffler's front row right now. She only has two offensive options. And the block is really keying on Alcantara right now. Entman stumbled a bit on that attempt. Burtz didn't get all of it, but got enough of the hands. The Sooners are just extending their lead here in the third set. Shaping up to be the Sooners' day. Burt's the kill off the hands. Timeout Bearcats, down nine to four. Oklahoma leads it nine to four in the third set, aiming for the sweep. Out of the Cincinnati timeout, they go to Alyssa Alcantara, and the kill is good off the block. Yeah, Alcantara still swinging hard. Was able to hit it and power it through the block off Burtz's hands and out of bounds. Nine kills for Alyssa Alcantara today. Preston is denied. Yeah, great block, Lily Nentman, Abby Walker. Abby Walker set a great block. Entman got there late, but she was able to turn her hands back into the court for that stuff block. Ooh, that was kind of a, a mystery serve there for Oklahoma. Both players and servers, he pulled away from each other, and that ball just landed right in the middle of the court. Bearcats will take it. A couple of points in a row out of the timeout. Chamberlain denied. Just did that a moment ago, but Bearcats ready for this one. Nice job by Alcantara staying with that setter, Peyton Chamberlain, who's in the front row. That is, that is her responsibility. She, with a two-hitter uh, front row, she has the setter. So nice heads-up move by Alcantara. Getting Burtz involved again out of the middle for Oklahoma to break the 4 nothing run. Burtz in double figures for consecutive days now in the eighth time this season. She's had 10 or more kills. Alcantara, the little roll shot popped up. Walker, oh. double contact. Yeah, the second that one left her hand, that whistle blew immediately. Yep, it was a good decision to go back to Abby Walker.
Walker almost overruns it, but still gets the point. That's been the crazy thing with last night and today. The, the ball's just hanging in the air, and it looks like Walker is on her way down when she's hitting that ball, but it just sneaks right through the block. Hostetler sends it over. Chamberlain, Burtz, good punch by Leffler. Blocked. Walker, too far long, but she did get a touch. That was a great team effort by Cincinnati. Good dig by Leffler. There was some good coverage in there. Gave Cincinnati a lot of opportunities. Abby Walker into double digits with her 10th kill, hitting 375. Kimaha, the good receive again, setting up Preston. There was a touch. Cincinnati celebrating. They thought they had the point. I think the down ref called Carly Glendening in the net on that block. I just remember that used to be so frustrating as a player when you're going up to block and say your wrist barely touches the net. It wouldn't even have moved. But if the down ref sees it, they will call it. Cincinnati didn't like that call. They celebrated the point. Hostel was getting ready to serve, but not to be. Blake Denning, though, gets the point right back. And I think that's exactly what I said. I think she got mad because she was called in the net for the block, and she came back with a vengeance on that swing. Yeah, that's that's probably her best swing on the weekend. She's in the double digit kills with 10. That was huge triple block in front of her, six big hands. She was able to hit fine high hands for that kill. McNeese the receive. Ellis in the attempt. McNeese, wow, that has velocity behind it. Just so impressed the way McNeese has played, especially for a player, as we mentioned, only had six total attacks this year. That is a point for Oklahoma. Ellison with the kill. So Ellison and McNeese, they are both very good athletes. They're un they're both undersized, but yeah, Oklahoma has a couple of undersized ballers on their roster. And some of the shots they've hit, those sharp cross court uh, cross court shots, have been tough to hit. I mean, because those are two of the hardest angles to hit when you're an outside hitter to hit that sharp cross court, the four zone, and then from as an opposite hitter to hit that two zone and that, you know, with their size, but they've got tremendous leaping ability to be able to hit that shot. Riley Fay could not corral that one. We talked about it when we saw Baylor a couple of weeks ago when Kendall Stout was, was out. And they had to go to release McGee a lot more and they started to incorporate a lot more players into their offense. Not to say you miss a Stowers or you miss a Shelton because you do, but it allows other players to step up and shine and showcase their ability a bit more. Right, and all of these players have, have been recruited to play in, in, the, in the Big 12 Conference for a reason. They are all very talented players, essentially being the best player on their high school team, their club team. And now you're just playing with the best of the best. Sometimes all it takes is an opportunity. Washington powers that one down. Took advantage of that free ball. Tremendous defensive effort that last time on with Oklahoma. Ireland McNeese again. I think she might have clipped the net on that swing, but that was that was an impressive uh, combination there. Great one-handed set. She did touch the net. It wasn't by very much. Unfortunate there for the Sooners. They get it right back. Ellison. So if one side gets the error, they just go to the other side, and Ellison has the kill. Yeah, Ellison all having a great night again. Eight, her eighth kill of the evening, no errors, hitting 444. It's been a great night for the outsides for Oklahoma. The middles as well. Off the block. 
little miscommunication there in the Oklahoma defense. That ball landed right middle back with no effort going for it. And that's one of those things with, she, Glenn Denning took some power off that, but that's one of those defensive plays that you think would be very easy and it can cause a miscommunication. 11 kills into double figures for the sixth time this year for the sophomore. Washington, too long, and no touch. What an unbelievable play by Scrawback. That's not really her ball. That ball off the block like that is the off blocker, which right now is Alcantara, but I don't think Alcantara would have gotten that. Tremendous play by Scrawback. Her second to last home game in Fifth Third Arena. Washington denied. Leffler resets. Alcantara connects. where her game has evolved as well. That she doesn't always have to swing hard. She's doing a much better job with those out of system plays. Just trying to figure out a way to put the ball down on the other side of Florida. It doesn't always have to be hard. You just have to find that opening in the opponent's defense. Kelsey Carrington. Has it deflect off her thigh? That ball was going out, but Carrington's momentum took her out of bounds, and it touched her thigh. So a point for Cincinnati. And that can happen with the slide attack. Their momentum is taking them outside the court, and if the ball is going with you, it's tough to avoid it. A tough one there for Carrington and the Sooners, but Preston dents the floor on the other side. Yeah, Preston, nice swing. Peyton Chamberlain, real quick tempo ball to the outside. Did not allow Cincinnati's block to close, and she powered it through that block. Ninth, tenth kill of this match. Three Sooners in double figures. McNeese, Burtz, and Preston now. Two for the Bearcats. Burtz tries to add to her total. A little decoy there out of the middle leads to a kill for Alyssa Alcantara. Yeah, again, I think Peyton Leffler, if she can continue jump setting, no matter if she's front row or back row, sometimes the blockers forget. Birds went up because Leffler was in the front row. That left a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Alcantara. Birds. Walker, flat-footed jump, and a little bit too long. Say that is the first error for Walker. All weekend. All weekend. The run comes to an end with 27 kills without an error. Very amazing stat. So we've seen this from both teams throughout the weekend. A lot of serves in the net. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to get it right above the tape because that ball is so difficult to pass. You just you can't tell how the depth of it, where if it's going to go deep or short. So both of these teams are trying to get that ball to barely go over, but with that risk of landing in the net. Burtz. Too long. And timeout, Oklahoma. Cincinnati trying to avoid the sweep. Up by three in set three. Oklahoma, after this, stays on the road at Texas Tech next Wednesday, the night before Thanksgiving, or the day before Thanksgiving. That'll be a 2 p.m. match. And they will wrap up the season shortly thereafter on the Saturday. Fans, it's time to announce tonight's winner of the Fan and it's been a tough season for the Sooners. They'll try to end on a high note against West Virginia. So we have talked about the, the standings up to this point. Uh, Texas Tech and West Virginia are towards the bottom of the Big 12, so it could be an opportunity for Oklahoma to get some wins. And Cincinnati as well. They have a little bit more of a difficult stretch to end the season. Kansas, number 14 in the country. That is a home match on Wednesday. One o'clock start inside this building. And then Iowa State on the road to end the year.
So you have a ranked team at home, which you play a top 15 team. It is. It's a different caliber of volleyball, and it's a fun atmosphere to be in to play a ranked team at home. But the Bearcats have proved to be good on the road as well. Iowa State's been ranked at different points this year as well, so not ranked currently, but right up there among the top teams in the country, a team that is likely going to get an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, but, you know, it's always nice to play those games at home. Cincinnati traditionally, you know, plays real strong at home. Going into the Big 12 is a little bit of a different story, just a different caliber of conference. Uh, but you always want to try to pick up those wins at home, even if it's a ranked opponent. Preston out of the timeout. Another decoy there by Entman. The Bearcats have deployed that a couple of times now, and the Sooners were ready for that one. Yeah, it's a good idea. By Glenn Denning, there was opening in there, Oklahoma's defense, but she's got to stay aggressive. She only had a double block there up in front of her that time, and her game right now is she's just a little tentative. She needs to stay aggressive, find a way to put that ball down on the other side. Tap by Ellison. Bearcats a little bit running all over the place right now, and Walker calms everybody down with the kill. So speaking of staying aggressive, Abby Walker has been taking aggressive swings tonight, and that is the difference. That was the difference last night for who won, which set is whoever was playing more aggressive. And that's Abby Walker's bread and butter right there when she's a middle blocker is her slide. Is very effective. Not many people could stop it. And so she did a great job transitioning. She was the off blocker. Great job transitioning into that slide for that kill. Good dig by Kimaha. Walker. Yes, another one. So she is just finding ways to use the block. Another situation, she's kind of coming down. The timing's a little bit off. But the way she's timing that hit with the block, it's just hitting Burtz's hand and going straight down. It's a, sh a shame she had that error, huh? Really put a damper on the weekend. <laughs> I guess she can have one. <laughs> one, that's it. Just one. It's like when you ask for a cookie before bed. You can only have one. A timeout again by Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma looks like they may drop this third set. Still a few more points to go, but Ireland McNeese has been fantastic for the Sooners. And if it does go to four, she's gonna have a chance to add on to what has been a career high today, 11 kills for Ireland McNeese. Yeah, she, she's a dynamic athlete. She's taking big swings. This is a bit, this is a big match for her. And I'm sure her teammates, her coaches, everyone loves seeing her succeed out there. And she's not only, you know, she has 11 kills, but she has 11 digs. She's it's her first career double-double, probably maybe, you know, first career collegiate start. You know, she may have started maybe being a, a defensive specialist, but to come out in this match, this magnitude and have a double-double is incredible. Just to reiterate, no kills, only six attempts coming into the match today. That's, yeah. That's crazy. So, I mean, she did not come out here nervous. No. She came out with big swings, and she, like we talked about her statistics, she is an all-around player. She is getting digs for her team, taking big swings. And I also, I love to see undersized players in Power Five conferences, especially attackers, because you're used to seeing six foot five, or I mean, Wisconsin has a player that's six nine, I think. So it's just, it's really cool to see players that are a little bit undersized also getting the experience at the net. I'm trying to think of an Ireland pun or something, something about Dublin, but I, it's not coming to me. You got nothing. No. Her stats might be Dublin after today, after the big performance. But um, boom. Yeah, a little dad joke there. There's a brief stoppage. Aaron Mansfield's having a word. Cincinnati serve and Molly Harrison has it for the Bearcats. 
Chamberlain, long set, McNeese, yes. Picks up right where she left off. She just comes, takes a great aggressive swing, cross court inside Zeta Washington's left hand, that sharp cross court, 12th kill this match. Tied for the match lead now with Abby Walker with the 12 kills. Glenn Denning right off the top of the net. McNeese. McNeese Walker. with that shot, she has some beef, some beach in her, in her wheelhouse. She's making some shots that you don't see in the indoor game. Yeah, again, Abby Walker, what a great swing. She's really developing as that opposite player. She just can find ways to score through the block, around the block, high over the block, that time deep cross court. One hand. Pretty kill, 13th kill. Denied. Nice blocked. Washington gets in the way. Get on your so we, we talk about the Abby Walker swings, but when she hit that last ball, it's deep corner. That ball is so hard to defend. It's impressive to hit the ball straight down, but when you're talking about efficiency, hitting high and deep, that is what you need. That was mostly Caitlin Leffler on that block. Carrington tries to keep the set alive. She does with the help of the net. Got just enough. Still set point for the Bearcats. Oklahoma needs a run. Oklahoma had a 10 to 1 run yesterday, so they can't do it. It's a good serve here from Thompson. And a free ball by the Bearcats. McNeese. On the antenna and out. Cincinnati wins the third set. And it'll take at least four to decide a winner today. Every set has been close. 25-20, 25-23, and now 25-20 in favor of the Bearcats. Cincinnati stays alive. We're going to number four in Cincinnati. After the Bearcats pull out the 25-20 victory in set three, Carly Glendenning. 11 kills today, one of three Bearcats in double figures. And you guys have said tonight she's had some of her best swings of the weekend in this match. She's taken some smart swings tonight. Uh, power is not something we've been seeing from her this weekend, but she has had some strategic swings that have come a big for team. You know, I think it's a big difference too when you're hitting against a triple block because as an outside hitter, you know, you may see a triple block in the middle, but, but as an outside hitter, you just don't play against a triple block. And I think she's still a young player, only a sophomore. Her game is still developing. And, I, I, you know, it's just taking some time for her to get comfortable and figure out what her shots are. That hitting percentage went way up for Cincinnati in that third set. It did. And I think that, I mean, I think they've been more aggressive in that last set. Uh, I think that should be a plan for them going forward uh, prove to be successful, but they have made things a little bit closer in the statistics. I mean, these numbers are practically dead even for everything. And through two sets, it was mostly Oklahoma with everything. Just one set totally flipped the script for Cincinnati. I think this, while watching both of these teams, they are very similar. Their serving is very similar. I think they, they have similar strengths and weaknesses. And that similar weakness compounds now with no Shelton. Cincinnati without their two outsides, their starting outsides, you take away an outside from Oklahoma. That just adds to the similarities between the two teams. It does, and how they've responded. I think I think Shelton's probably very excited with, with the way that her team has responded. I mean, she at one point tonight, it was 2-0 in favor of Oklahoma looking at a possible sweep. But it is very nice to see players that normally do not see the court, like we've talked about the six attempts for McNeese, but she's having a great night tonight. Cincinnati serve to start set four. Oh. 
And a good one. McNeese punches it up. Coral Bergoyevich sends it over on the free ball. And she's first to it on the receive. Too long for Ellison and no touch. I think a big difference for Cincinnati in that third set is they're, they're serving. They need to be more aggressive from the service line to try to keep Oklahoma out of system and be able to take away Lydia Burks in that middle because 11 kills hitting 391 on the evening. Host Settler's a good one to have back there. Notre Dame Academy, two-time state champ down in Kentucky. Burks tries to tap it. Strawback with a jumping effort to keep that alive. Long back set, Daly Ellison denied. Well, shoulder dig there by Leffler. Punched around and too many contacts for the Sooners. Say with a rally like that, quick tempo, quick tempo sets for both sides. It looks like the timing was a little bit off. They've, both sides tried to go to an off-speed shot, but that one for McNeese just landed in the net. So if you have a kick dig, could you call that a shin dig? <laughs> <Ba -dum -bum. laughs> that one was better, wasn't it? <laughs> yep. Q I roll. Well, you said shoulder dig, and I'm like, all right, how can we combine that? And I thought shin dig. I'm like, all right, shin dig. We'll roll with that. Going well, back to that big swing, five verts, which, like you said, Melissa, I think that that it has to be a strategy for Cincinnati. Try to serve aggressively. Make sure that Oklahoma can't set her because she is their most efficient attacker tonight. She is, and they, you know, all weekend they haven't figured out a way to slow her down. She's had tremendous two matches here in Cincinnati. Yeah, Burtz has that ace there right off the top of the net. She had 13 kills yesterday and 12 today with still at least this fourth set to go. Another ace ties up Strawback. And that's exactly the type of serve that is dangerous. If it crosses the net, you can't tell if that ball's gonna drop like the first one or go deep like that last one. It looked like Scrawback was charging up a little bit, thinking it was going to drop. That one's too long. Right out there, Breaks a three nothing Third scoring run for the Sooners. Heading back to the Sooners, America, number five, Lillian Edmond. Entman serving for the Bearcats. And serving is where we've seen Entman this season. She has come in to serve on a couple of occasions. Glenn Denning chunks that one. Point for the Sooners. Just the double block there for Oklahoma, but a tough one for Glenn Denning falling away a bit. You see there Shelton, who is sidelined today for Oklahoma. They have done well without her, but she's all wrapped up over there. Certainly wishing her the best. It's incredible that she came back in at the end of that match yesterday. Of course, you're probably riding adrenaline at that point, but the fact that she popped right up and was ready to go after that was impressive. Right, I think that was a little bit of adrenaline uh, for Shelton. But I think with such a quick quick turnaround, playing again tonight, tonight was obviously out of the cards, but I think Oklahoma does want to try to get her back uh, within the next week because we only have one more week left of the regular season. Joust neutral right now. We have a, a mid-swing on touch number two. You don't see a lot of those. Yeah, that was Chamberlain falling down. And Glendening the kill. That was just a mess for Oklahoma over that whole rally. That's yeah. where Peppering comes in handy. She just hit that ball back to her own team for them to send it over on the third contact. And that's what Coach Mansfield has said. He said it looks reckless at times. It may not be pretty at times, but you know they, they're staying in the the rally, they're staying in the play. I don't know if you feel this way, Melissa. He said reckless, it looks ugly at times. It hasn't looked outlandish, though. Like, when he said reckless, I thought it was going to be 
like all over the place, but they have seemed calm, cool, and collected when they've needed to. Yeah, they really have. And, um, you know, I think defensively, the, the effort on their side has been tremendous. So it, it, it kind of takes the pressure off the hitters a little bit. Um, where, you know, they, it may not look as bad or as reckless um, because they're able to stay in system. And most teams, when they stay in system, look, look better than when they're out of system. That's a net violation on Caitlin Leffler. Net violation, that ball was put too tight by Walker. That was a situation that ball just needed to be a little bit off the net so Leffler would be able to set her hitters. And it didn't really have many options there. She does set this one for Glenn Denning. It's pushed right back. Now to the middle, Washington. Good cover and dig by Kimaha. Doesn't matter. Point for the Bearcats. Great block by Cincinnati on that. There were a couple of tips back and forth, but Cincinnati relied on their block to end that rally. Washington approaching double figures, and she is in double figures with that kill, her 10th. I actually, leaving the match last night, I ran into her mom, uh, Zeta Washington, and... Was she swimming towards you? She was not no? at the time. She was wearing, she was wearing a, her, her winter coat. Um, but I obviously recognized her from the package from last night, uh, pictures with Zeta and her mom together. Um, but I had made the comment about how Washington has just been stoic. Uh, throughout the season. She's very mature, and it's nice to see that for only being a freshman. And she laughed a little bit and said, oh, we were just talking about uh, her ma her maturity. And I'm like, oh, well, am I missing something? I was like, oh, is she not? And like, no, 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 she is. She's very competitive. And I love hearing that about athletes now, nowadays especially. It's just, I love when there's a real competitive player out on the court because you can feel it, you can see it. You want to play on a side with a, with a player who is so competitive. Well, she's the highest rated recruit in Cincinnati's program history, a one-time rookie of the week in the Big 12. I have to imagine too, when your dad played in a Wimbledon final, your mom swam at Arizona, comes from a very athletic family. Her brother Noah plays football at Richmond. Her aunt was also a former top 50 tennis player. When you have that environment with professional after professional after professional, you kind of learn how to navigate that media presence and attention and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you really do. But, you know, you, you're going to be really competitive because of your the, the genes. But you could also, you know, maybe go the other way and not care, not be as competitive because you just have been around it your entire life. You know, but it's definitely in the genes with Jada, Zeta Washington. Kill for Alcantara there. She has some good genes as well. Her mom played on the Dominican Republic national team. That was a really great scramble by Cincinnati, but somehow Oklahoma ended up at that point. I think it hit the antenna. That was a great swing down the line, but it hit the antenna. She Alcantara goes right goes, to it, though. Yeah, she goes right back to it and made it right. It seems like when triple block is up there for Oklahoma, Cincinnati is aiming for that player right near the antenna. That seems to be the player they're targeting rather than that sharp cross court. Well, and it is the smaller block, the smaller blocker in that situation. And Leffler's doing a good job because, you know, not you, you can't hit line all the time. If the set is not there out by the pin, you know, you can't always hit line. So Caitlin Leffler's doing a good job pushing that ball all the way out to the pin to allow her outside hitters to be able to use the line and hit line like that. Another kill for Burtz there for Oklahoma. But I think that helps to explain why we've seen so many antenna and out for Cincinnati because that is where, with the triple block, you're almost forced to hit it. You're forced to go live with that triple block. Say, and then it's a smart move by Akater. You go towards the smaller blocker, but with the triple block, it does leave a vulnerability because it leaves a huge open spot, sharp cross court. So if you hit an off speed shot, a roll shot, sharp cross court, there is no one there. Is that something teams do a lot, that triple block? Some teams will do it in out of system situations because there's time for the outside blocker to get there, but you, you don't see it a lot. It's part of what Aaron Mansfield told us, a lot of unique things as they try to implement a new system that typically takes about a year to fully get in place. And there's Daly Ellison again. 
with a powerful kill. They first had a great serving run in her last time back, but that one just landed right towards the top of the net. Point to the Bearcats. Molly Harrison back in to serve. This has become her role as the season has unfolded, that serving specialist. For years, that was Kirsten Ficker for the Bearcats. Harrison with the receive here. When getting, hoping for the touch, didn't get it. So it looks like we're going to see a challenge from Coach Alvi. I like the swing by Glenn Denning. That was one of her more aggressive swings of the night and being an out of system ball. That's, that's what you got to do because teams are going to think that you're going to try to keep it in play. It's out of system, but she took a big grip at that ball. I'm not sure here with the replay which player it might have gotten. Would have been the outside there. It would, it would have, have been, been McNeese. McNeese. Yeah, left hand maybe of McNeese. Melissa, you're the bespeckled one. What do you see? I don't know. I, I, I live, I thought there was a touch, but now watching it on replay, I just, I, I don't think. I think it went over McNeese's left hand. I don't think it touched it. This, I think, is the best angle. Oh, I don't know. Her Maybe fingers the look like they move. Yeah. Those. The two outside fingers. Yes. Yeah. The ring finger and that pinky. I think they, they, you can see them move a little bit. We'll see if the officials see what we see. Sometimes they do not get the exact camera look that we're looking at, but we'll see. And it is a touch. Good challenge. Good challenge by Coach Alvey. I mean, I think all six of Cincinnati starters on the floor saw the touch. So that was a great challenge by Coach Alvey. Now Shelton's still trying to have some fun over there. You have to imagine this is eating at her, not being out there, and doing her best to do a little jig despite being injured. Washington is blocked. It's nicely done by Ellison and Burtz. And that brings us to a timeout. Neither team called the timeout before that 15th point, so we take the break. Oklahoma still in the driver's seat, but Cincinnati trying to make it a five-set match again. Well, Cincinnati has figured something out. They've settled down, going back to basics. Really starting to serve a lot better. So Tougher, making it tough on Oklahoma and their serve receive. Big block there by Walker and Washington. Probably the biggest block Cincinnati has are those two up at the net. That was all Walker. Yeah, Walker's such a good blocker. She just sets such a good block, but you can just see her hands and shoulders seals off that net. That's part of that middle blocker training before she switched to the outside. Exactly, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, well, she is a middle blocker, but with the cards that Cincinnati's been dealt this season, she has been filling that opposite position. Yeah, middle blocker by training, but now all of a sudden being thrust in that outside role with no more boss in Eggleston. Both of whom are out for the season for Cincinnati. That ball what? just fell off the table and into the back corner. What a great serve. That ball almost, it seemed like the ball had a magnet on it and it just dropped right before that end line. Wow. Had a mind of its own. It did. It, it just like, it was soaring and then just dropped. Tried to do it again. That must be so hard to do. You get it once and then you try to do it exactly the same way again. It is very difficult. It's difficult to have the same serve over and over. 
A good one there for Sydney Thompson, the sophomore from Tulsa. Lundenning rises and a big kill. Stayed in system. That was a great dig back there by Hostetler. Was able to stay in system. Kelsey Carrington wasn't quite able to close. Glenn Denning just hammered that ball through the seam. And she blocks this one. That was sick. I will say, she had a big kill, and then she turns around and caps that ball so low. Oh, that was huge. And this is the Glenn Denning that we saw last year. Just you can see as the match goes on, she's playing with more and more confidence. <laughs> what an awesome block. That was, that one gave me chills. That was so good. Watching the replay, I was like, that was, that was solid. That is your favorite play after all. It is, yeah. She was all alone up there and really pressed over the net and capped that ball. I don't know what gets you more excited, the dig or the solo block. I know you always say the solo block is your favorite, but you let out ecstatic ooze when you see a good dig. I do, and I don't know why. I don't know why it's a, it's a dig, but sometimes a good rally is going, but then there's a ball you think is going to get hammered, and it, it gets dug right up in the middle of the court. It is cool to see and watch rallies last longer. Melissa, did you have a favorite play when you were playing? Was there something as a setter that when you did that, you're like, oh, this was this was good. I, I always liked setting my middle blockers. Um, that, that's the way I was trained. And so when I had, you know, just a perfect set in the middle of one, and I, I had the opportunity to play with some pretty good middle blockers, and when they would just pound it to the floor, that, that was what was most exciting to me. Well, this crowd is awfully excited. Cincinnati on the verge of making this a five-set match for the second consecutive night. Say, so if this goes five, this will be the second time this season that they have faced the same opponent and gone to five both nights. First, it was West Virginia at West Virginia. And the way it's looking tonight, could be facing Oklahoma in a double five set. And that was a split for Cincinnati going one and one out in Morgantown. Zeta Washington Zeta makes it 20 to 12. Washington. I mean, this is something with volleyball that, you know, is like no other sport. You can be down 0-2 and come back. And I mean, the momentum, Oklahoma had all the momentum first two sets. And now the, this momentum has just totally shifted the Bearcats way. That's a tough one for Washington. Tries it again, middle of the floor. Coral Bregojevic with a good dive. But a miss hit for McNeese, a rare one tonight for the freshman. So we've talked about momentum, but when it comes to the fifth set, the Bearcats have the momentum now, but when that fifth set starts, there's a little bit of a pause in between uh, the fourth and the fifth, and anything can happen. Good punch by Sydney Thompson. Glenn Denning, yes, right past Kimaha. Glenn Denning is finding her footing tonight. She has had a couple of swings that have really gotten her going, and that monster block but she is swinging with more confidence. She is, and Oklahoma has gone away from that triple block, and I think that's really benefiting Carly Glenn Denning because she, she does a good job of hitting that angle, but with a triple block up there, it takes away that angle. Glenn Denning has now tied her season high, 15 kills. McNeese taps it. Right back to McNeese, the left-handed try this time. Long set, Glenn Denning looking for the season high, doesn't have it yet. Now she has to play D, and not enough muscle for Walker on the diving effort. Point for the Sooners. Great hustle by both teams tonight. We've seen Oklahoma players flying through the air, going after balls, keep it, keep it alive, and same with the Bearcats. Players are giving it their all. Way off the net for Glenn Denning. Just tries to pick her spot. Kimaha denies her. Washington gets the point. 
Yeah, yeah nice job by Glenn getting that ball off at his system, was way off the net. She kept it in play, hit it sharp cross court. Zeta Washington up there for the overpass, put the ball away. Two points from getting this fourth set. Good dig by Whittakin. Alcantara. It's a tough ball to swing, but Alcantara did get a good swing on that ball to keep it alive. Preston, her ball deflected. Right back to her, it's blocked. And another point, and set point for the Bearcats. Big point differential here in the fourth, 24 to 13. This has probably been the biggest gap we've seen over the past two nights. Everything has been close. Oklahoma had one yesterday, I think it was 25-15, but outside of that, every set has been decided by a handful of points. Alcantara ends it, and we're going to five. Crazy turn of events here. Oklahoma comes out 2-0, winning the first two sets in pretty convincing fashion. And now we're going to five. This could be a reverse sweep for the Bearcats. Or Oklahoma could turn this thing around and get a win on the road. Really like the change in game plan. Alcantara has really done a good job with her game hitting line. And I think it's turned turn this match around with her being able to go line. Carly Glendening has picked up her offensive output. Well, dominating win for the Bearcats. We're going to five. 25-13 in the fourth, a dominating win for the Bearcats to make it a five-set match. We played a 15. Cincinnati has totally flipped the script. Oklahoma was dominating in most categories, still leading in aces, but the Bearcats have totally swung things in their favor. Say, defensively, you can tell they came alive with their blocking, 10 blocks through four, and out digging, 72-63. Well, Zeta Washington, Melissa, has been fantastic yet again. Cincinnati and Oklahoma both three and four in five set matches this season. But Zeta Washington, 12 kills, only two errors this season or this match for the Bearcats. Yeah, she really has, and she's a true freshman. She does not play like a true freshman. She is so competitive, but she's very mature. And you know she's gonna get the ball. She gets the ball, it's a little bit higher set but she still finds ways to put the ball on the floor and score for her team. Again, only playing to 15. You have to win by two still. That rule is still in play. Saying through four sets for Cincinnati, we have four players with double digit kills. For Oklahoma, they have three players, double digits almost with the fourth, uh, with Ellison at nine kills. It's been a well-rounded attack for both sides. Two teams that have had the injury bug hit them. Oklahoma more recently. The Bearcats have had to deal with it all year long. Helps to explain why the records are down a little bit for both of these teams. A lot of transition for both, but Oklahoma trying to salvage the weekend with a split. Cincinnati looking for their first sweep of the season. Starts off well for the Sooners. Big red for Preston. Yeah, we really haven't called her name much in that. We didn't call it much in that fourth set at all. That was a great swing inside set. Abby Walker needed to move that block a little bit further inside. She was able to hit that angle. 11th kill in this match. Good serve. Walker tumbles over Hostetler. And down for Ellison. So he was talking about her, Stephanie. She now has 10 for the Sooners. was a little bit off for Glenn Denning. A little bit off the net, but that Oklahoma block was able to cap that, that seam. Preston off the block. And out, Walker with the kill. What we're gonna see here in this fifth set is Cincinnati is gonna feed Walker just like they did last night. Fifth set, they gave her the ball whenever they could. Oklahoma has Burtz in the front row. If it's a good ball, I, I see it going to her as well. There you go. There it is. 
perfect right, pass. Right. They have a perfect pass. You were right on. They're going to feed Burks. That's 14th kill this match. Say, Burtz is leading the Sooners in kills, and as a middle, that's not something you see often. 14 kills, just two errors, hitting 429. Pass just too tight. Caitlin Leffler is in the back row. She's not able to jump and take that ball over the net. You keep that pass just a little bit off the net. That's happened a couple of times for the Illinois State transfer tonight. Cora Blagojevic, she has a great serve. I think it is a little risky for the Bearcats to only have two in serve receive on a serve like that. Uh, it, is, it is a tough one with the way that it spins. McNeese, denied. Hurts. Very gently taps yeah. it over. Yeah. Timing a little bit off to hit her setter. Burt still found a way to find that open spot. Cincinnati's defense, 15th kill of this match. Uh, timeout for the Bearcats, five to one. The Sooners with a big lead, especially only playing to 15 in set five. Verse sweep. Abby Walker punched around. Left for the set, Glenn Denning. Out of the middle for Washington now, looking for the touch, not there. Oklahoma's block has really picked up in this fifth set. Cincinnati's doing a good job of covering, but Oklahoma's block is really causing havoc on those hitters for Cincinnati. Say, and this all starts with Coral Blagojevich's serve. It's deadly. McNeese the dunk down. But she is keeping the Bearcats out of system. Her serve is so difficult that they're just trying to get it up, and that takes Washington out of the equation. Leffler has to set one of the pin hitters, and that makes it a little bit easier on the block. Mele Coral Blagojevich did not play much yesterday. The only time we saw her is when she came on for Shelton in the final point in the fifth set. But that is a weapon from the line. The Bearcats do get the point there. But Coral Blagojevich has been deadly at the line. 7-2 Sooners. Runs into Kimaha there, looking for the receive. And runs into Ellison on this free ball. Cross court, what a dig, Kimaha. McNeese tries again. And she gets this one. So this is gonna come down to the quality of block touches. Both of these teams have a nice solid block, but it's gonna come down to who's gonna get a better touch with their block. I imagine coverage also factors into that as well, right? Right, if you're a solid block, you just gotta make sure that you're covering your hitters, but I, from what I have seen from both of these teams so far in this fifth, for the points that are scored, it, the block is involved some way or another. And you don't always have to have a stuff block. You just wanna set a good block. You're, Blocker at the pin needs to set a good block. Your middle blocker needs to close on it. And you don't always have to have a stuff block, but as long as you are not being tooled and you are funneling that ball toward your defense, that's a su successful block. Oklahoma in front, eight to two. The teams just switch sides. Riley Fay is serving. Nice blocks. Great coverage. That's just what you were talking about. Lindenning. Coral Blagojevic with a good dive. Chamberlain, look at that set. But into the net. So Oklahoma, they're playing very well in this fifth set. They're, they're covering, they're getting second chances, it's aggressive on their serve, which is. This is why it's 8-3 in their favor. Well, you guys both talked about the momentum swings, and Stephanie, you mentioned how there is a bit of a delay between sets four and five, not quite the intermission, but there is a slight holdover longer than you would have from normal set to set. Right, and say in the fifth set, if you get a run, 
there's not a lot of time to get that back if you're on the losing end of that run. Gave Oklahoma a chance to regroup and maybe took some of the wind out of Cincinnati's sails. McNeese looks absolutely gassed. <laughs> she does. But she's still swinging hard. But what a defensive effort on both sides of the court in that ride. That was one of the longer rallies of this match. And McNeese, you know, you can't say enough good things about her. What a match she's having. 15th kill. It is her career high because she didn't have any coming into the match. And I think there is a challenge now from Cincinnati. I think there's an the Oklahoma looks like they're challenging the the down referee on what's a challengeable call. So you're saying they're challenging the challenge? They are. Say so this is in my really skilled lip reading. <laughs> Oklahoma is definitely challenging the challenge. We have a front row seat here. Touches it at the same time. I, I, this is a tough one. I don't is think. That ball, you know, where was that ball? Because right. she's tall enough to be able to jump. Even if the ball's on the other side or if it's on the plane of the net, she's tall enough to jump and bring it back to her side. Which she did. She Which did she try did. to set it. So, she did not attempt to attack. This really is shaping up to be like yesterday's match. Goes to five, there's a challenge that could alter the outcome in terms of which way it's gonna go. And I think, I don't think there is gonna be a challenge, but it does kind of give Cincinnati a little bit of a break to regroup, use it as a timeout, essentially. So the challenge of the challenge is unsuccessful. No, the challenge that of the challenge is, is successful. successful. I forgot who I forgot There's who so issued the challenge. It was Cincinnati who challenged the original call. And it stays Oklahoma point after the challenge of the challenge. If you're still following all of us, I, I, I don't know if I am at this point. The challenge is the challenge of the challenge of the challenge. <laughs> Alcantara, McNeese, well she just got a break during that challenge as well. Washington the float, and it's good. Seda Washington always finds a way to score. She just does, can do so many things with the ball. She has great court no. awareness. She, she knows that that's wide open right behind the block. Yep, triple block there, the right front was a little late getting there but triple block and that hole is going to be right that's Anna Fittner who we have not talked about much so Oklahoma getting some depth out there fresh legs and Fittner with the kill all starts with a pass it was a good pass be able to feed your middle blockers with that slide and that's been effective for Oklahoma all night. That down the line swing off the slide. Oklahoma needs five more points to win in five sets and avoid the reverse sweep. Fifner. Alcantara is too long, no touch. Cincinnati's backs against the wall, only playing to 15. Kali Kimaha serving. Tough one for Burtz, but just directed it in front of Leffler for the kill. Yeah, good decision there by Peyton Chamberlain. It was a good pass. Middle blocker, Burt stayed with her setter and just nice quick tempo and just tipped it right in the right spot. 
say nothing's impossible here, but it would take quite a lot for, for Cincinnati to come back here and win this fifth set. This has been one of the largest uh, gaps we've seen from them in a fifth set. Usually they keep it pretty close throughout the set, but this is 12 to five. Very limited, limited room to come back here. Well, just as a reminder, it is senior night tonight, and there will be a senior night ceremony coming up at the conclusion of the match. We will stay live on the Big 12 now on ESPN to bring that to you as the Bearcats will honor three seniors, Jaden Boss, Alyssa Alcantara, and Carly Strawback. Coming up at the conclusion of the match on the Big 12 now on ESPN. Looking like Oklahoma might avoid the reverse sweep. A very tough deficit to overcome, only playing to 15 points. But we've seen crazier things happen. We have. I, I'm sure there has been a comeback from being down 12 to 5 somewhere in NCAA volleyball history. Uh, but it takes it takes a pretty dominant performance. Preston blocked and out. Preston doing a good job. Abby Walker almost had it. She just needed to press that right hand back towards zone six. Preston able to use that block though, 12th kill of this match. Oklahoma doing a great job at digging Abby Walker here in this fifth. Their defense with the blocks and the digs and the coverage has really come alive. Walker, Thompson, good spot. Preston again, cross court, Strawback has trouble. Thompson punches it up. Great hustle by Thompson. Just excellent defense, both sides really, but especially for the Sooners. Burks again, no velocity behind it, but just perfect placement. Yeah, Cincinnati on the weekend just hasn't figured out a way to stop birds, but she does such a great job. It doesn't always have to be hard. She just is finding that open spot on the floor, and that's her 16th kill of this match. 16. 16. 467. Yeah, and the 16, Melissa, ties Carly Glendening for the match high, and it is match point for the Sooners. No room to work with for the Bearcats, and it ends right there. Well, the Sooners avoid the reverse sweep. Peyton Chamberlain with the final point. And the Sooners have their first win of the month. They had lost four in a row. So both teams this weekend, guys, get off the schneid in terms of the losing streak. Cincinnati yesterday won for the first time in four matches. Oklahoma with the loss yesterday. They had lost four in a row, but they win today. Nice for both teams to get back in the win column this weekend. And it is good for, for both teams. I'm not sure how their respective staffs feel about that. I'm sure both of them thought this weekend, this is a big weekend for us. We need to go 2-0. and And so 1-1 one, one is, I guess, a happy medium for both teams. Yeah, really, and in the great two matches, both went five. It could have gone really either way. This, this set five tonight was Oklahoma all the way. They really picked up in that set five. They really picked up their service game. And then, like Stephanie said, Abby Walker yesterday in set number five really dominated. And set five today, they figured out a way how to slow Abby Walker down. Everything's close this whole weekend. But then you get to the final two sets today, Cincinnati with a big set four win. And then Oklahoma wins by 10 in the fifth set. Pretty dominating performance by Oklahoma in the fifth. And volleyball, is it is a game of runs. And it's just m making sure that you can minimize those runs throughout a match, but in the fifth set, it just, it's tough. It's tough to come back once you allow a run so early on. Tip of the cap to Oklahoma. Down their best player offensively today, no Alexis Shelton, but Ireland McNeese stepped up. Her first kills of the year, she explodes for a double-double with 15 kills and 14 digs. A split of the weekend for Oklahoma and Cincinnati. For Stephanie Niemer and Melissa Lucky, I'm Anthony Mazzini signing off from the Queen City. Oklahoma and Cincinnati split the weekend. Make sure to stay tuned for senior celebration for the Bearcats.
all those in attendance for tonight's match. Here comes volleyball back in action. Fifth Road Arena, November 17th, as they take on the Kansas Jayhawks. First serve is at 1 p.m. We hope to see you there. Fans, please again stick around for the senior night ceremony beginning shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the court where coach, head coach Molly Alvey will honor three outstanding members of the volleyball senior class. First, we'd like to recognize the senior outside hitter, number 11, Alyssa Alcantara. My favorite thing about Alyssa is how she cares about everyone so deeply. Um, she. My favorite thing about Alyssa is how she cares about everyone so deeply. Um, she is always there to make us laugh, and we've got so many inside jokes together, so I'm gonna miss joking with her in the locker room and on the sidelines. She loves physical touch, she loves to hold your hand, and she loves to give you a hug on the court. And when she's in the front row, knowing that she's right there and I can just like hold her hand for like three to five seconds, it's like really nice to just have her as that person. While we were competing before we went off to Europe, like I was really nervous and timid, and I think one of the first things that Alyssa did was just kind of like grab my hand and like just calm me down and like that's like Liz to me like she's always a person I can just kind of look to. She's always full of energy which makes me also have a lot of energy and I just love how big her heart is. You never like you never know what to expect in like a good way like she's kind of like a spark plug. And she's always the first one to make me smile and to get me out of my head on the court. Um, in the weight room she was always one of my partners so it was awesome being able to watch her grow and always be around her. Warming up next to her every single day, every practice, every game, it really is just super influential whenever you're looking across the gym and you're constantly looking at a smile. Whenever someone makes a joke she's always like, "Oh, you're so funny. But that's it in the most like strangest way possible so it makes you think you're not funny. I feel like a friendship kind of instantly formed there. I think she's always someone who can add comedic relief to the group and she always knows how to make everyone laugh and so it's really fun to just play with her and just kind of giggle on the court with her. You know reflecting on Alyssa and her time here I think I'm most proud um, of the the effort and I think really the work that she has put into her academics and really reaching this goal of graduation and it's been a really tough road for her, but once she figured out what it took um, from just, you know, the things that she needed to do that were really gonna make her successful, um, she really found a spark of confidence in herself. And as a coach, 
when you see that confidence come out of a player, no matter where they find it, right? If they can find this path academically and it brings confidence to them, that translates to the court. And, and vice versa, if there's a confidence piece that's found on the court, that translates into the rest of their lives. So I'm really, really proud to have had Alyssa with us these last two years and and to see that confidence and that kind of light shine in her and and to have her be receiving her diploma this december is going to be something so special i think for her and for and for her family so proud to have had her a part of this team and the contributions that she's brought on the court and in the classroom to to our bearcat volleyball family 45 digs and 32 blocks during her two years at the bearcat she had a career weekend in Cincinnati's series against West Virginia this season, highlighted by a career-high 23 kills in the first matchup. She will finish her playing career with over 490 kills and 80 blocks. Joined by her parents, Gina and Robert Alcantara, please welcome number 11, Alyssa Alcantara. Alcantara. Next, we have graduate student and outside hitter, number six, Jaden Boss. Bossman is always someone you can go to if you need a laugh. She's always making a silly face. Bossman is always someone you can go to if you need a laugh. She's always making silly faces, and um, we always like to crack jokes with each other. She's always someone to crack a joke with. She has such a dry sense of humor. My favorite memory with Jaden is dyeing our hair pink um, for our October breast cancer awareness game. My favorite memory with Jaden is when she came over and we watched The Sun is Also a Star and she started sobbing. One of my best friends on the team, and I remember one of my favorite memories with her is when we were all watching A Star is Born and we were all just on the couch sobbing. I'm going to miss having Jaden on the team because she brought such a special energy and special light to this team. But she came in, really established herself as a leader, and she's really one of those girls that like leads by example. Um, and it's something super special and it's gonna be really missed on the team. I feel like even though she hasn't been there like the whole the whole season, she's been very resilient with her um, with her knee injury. In the short time that I was able to play with Jaden, she's a natural leader. Um, she has so much energy, she's goofy, and uh, it was great to be around her this year. Um, she's really shown a lot of us what it means to just have good character and great teamwork. She's always there for us, even whenever she didn't get to shine herself. She very much is a boss, like boss man. She, <laughs> she wears that name to her core. Like She's always like upbeat and like, I remember when I came in the summer, she was one of the first people that I met since she was transferred here. And I just grew like really close with her and her work ethic is one of the best and I've always looked up to her ever since the first day of workouts in the summer. Not only just a teammate and a friend, but she's also a mentor for me, I feel like. I think she's the best hype man I think our team has had. I um, explicitly remember when Jaden came on her visit, we had a, a brief dialogue and talking about what our favorite places to play um, in conference were for each of us. And, um, you know, after she had asked me that question, I, of course, asked her and said, hey, what was your favorite place to play in conference? And she said, without a doubt, Cincinnati. So I had hoped that we would be the place that she would choose to come play. And in the short term, we found out she did. She chose to be a Bearcat and she chose us. And I could not be more thankful for that opportunity to have her here. And, um, you know, just see what she has brought to the team. And I think, you know, her, her injury obviously impacted all of us tremendously, but it really told me a lot about who she is as a person. And um, she is one of the most unbelievable people that I've met. Um, she hasn't stopped working her tail off. Um, she is just getting stronger and working so hard every single day. Um, she has been a consummate teammate, constantly cheering on her teammates, 
constantly engaged, you know, adjusting her schedule to make sure that she's always available and around and kind of being that outer voice to her teammates. And um, I couldn't thank her enough for that. And I'm really proud to be able to celebrate her today and all of her accomplishments. And I really do hope um, that she knows and understands how much of a value she has brought to our program and to Bearcats volleyball. She led the team in kills eight times and finished it with double digit kills in 10 matches before her season was cut short due to injury. Jaden finishes her story career with 912 kills, 101 service aces, and 123 blocks. We would also like to recognize Jaden for surpassing 1,000 career digs this season. Joined by her parents, Shalene and Mike Boss, please welcome number six, Jaden Boss. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's hear it for number six, Jaden Boss. This commemorative ball is to congratulate her on over for 1,000 career days. Our final student athlete is a graduate student, Lil Barrow, number 14, Carly Skrawback. A memory of Skrawback was when we went to Europe and every picture we took. A memory of Skrawback was when we went to Europe and every picture we took, we would put our arms around each other like this, and ever since then, on every travel trip, we've been doing it. Um, she's super funny. She is always sniping us on Snapchat with her phone, uh, even when we didn't know each other very well. Um, she's just someone I really enjoy playing on the court with. She's got a great sense of humor, and I love going to get Starbucks with her. She, as a freshman, she's really helped me get welcomed here, and I can just always look up to her, and she has so much good advice. Um, we'd always go grocery shopping together. I mean, we still do, but I specifically remember in the spring her being like, well, I hope you're my best friend because we are best friends because we're in this together. We're new together. One of my favorite memories with Carly was over the summer, a big group of us like just getting on Thursday nights, watching the summer I turned pretty. Um, it's just such like a funny like bonding moment with all of us. She's always the first person to give me advice or just to like ask me how my day's going. I feel like on the outside, she's a little bit quiet, but once you get to know her, she's probably one of the funniest people that I know. But what she did a really good job of is truly taking us all underneath her wing, whether we're a DS or not, and just really showing us the ropes in every aspect, and not just volleyball, but life including. One of my favorite things about Grandma is that she's always like very steady. Like Every single game, every single practice, she comes with the exact same presence. Um, whether it has to be like serving, passing, defense, she always plays the the exact same. Carly's really one of the most calm people on the court and she always just brings like the same energy to every game and it's so amazing to have someone like who's so mature on the court with us. Um, for grandma I think something that I will remember or take from the season is that she calls me pickle and I've never been called pickle and I think it's really funny and she's also just someone that I really look up to. Um, she's such a big leader on the court and it's really fun to play next to her. It's been um, amazing to have her here. I tell you what's really interesting is to see um, her personality really come alive this fall semester. You know, I think it's hard to come in um, to a new program and in the spring and she's always been an incredibly hard worker, um, really deep in thought of what it is that she needs to contribute on a day-to-day -day basis in practice what it is that she needs to contribute, you know, with the matches and how she can make the team be better. And it's been awesome to get to know her better and see the, um, the experienced side of Carly come alive and um, how she's been a phenomenal role model to our team and able to really be an excellent communicator 
and the person on the court that can raise the level of everyone else around her. We've, we talk about that a lot of, you know, the best players in the country are great players, but they also have that special ability to make everyone else around them raise their level of play and have the confidence that it takes to be the best players that they, they can be on the court. So I have just truly loved getting to know her and um, so appreciative that she chose to be a Bearcat and I'm really looking forward to see what she's gonna be up to next um, in her life and her career. She led the Bearcats in digs in all but three matches this season and ranks fourth in the Big 12 in digs per set. She has totaled at 1,863 digs and 420 assists in her decorated career. Joined by her mother, Kristen Scrawback, please welcome number 14, Carly Scrawback. Carly Scrawback. On behalf of your teammates, coaches, friends, and families, we want to thank you for your hard work and dedication to the program and in the classroom, as well as your contributions in the University of Cincinnati communities. We wish you nothing but the best in your future educational and professional endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating the Cincinnati Volleyball Class of 2023. One more time for the 2023 graduates of the Cincinnati Volleyball. 